Hi, I'm Ben, and today I'm gonna to talk to you about my creative struggle. A struggle to be happy, content, and live a fulfilling and meaningful life. It's a struggle that everyone can relate to in a world so connected that we're all so disconnected from reality. My creative struggle is something that I've always faced because of these five factors. Number one, I've always struggled to find a community of like-minded people, so there's a lack of peer pressure involved. Number two, Extroversion can actually be a curse, because if there's a lack of teammates, there's a lack of creativity. Number three, I'm very curious, so there's a lack of focus when I'm all over the place. Number four, perfectionism, but I've started to figure that out as well. And number five, debatably the most important, faltering motivation, which I've found out very recently is actually a lack of discipline. I've thought about this a lot, and as disjointed as these factors sound, they work together to create my worst nightmare, my creative struggle, which is the whole point of this video. This struggle has prevented me from doing the things that I really want to do over the last 10 years, which is to create more. Let me first explain where I'm coming from, and then I'll get back to these five points. I grew up in Elmer, Quebec, just across from Canada's capital, Ottawa. My amazing parents did the best that they could with what they had financially, which wasn't much at all. I made some of my best friends there, but at the age of 12, my family moved to London to further my dad's career. And I lost those friends. Sadness overtook me for years after because I never really remade friends that were as tightly knit as the OG Elmer crew. I felt like I didn't fit in. And most of the time, that was the case. I didn't fit in. And I didn't have any close friends to turn to when I had problems. Gradually that changed, but incredibly slowly. Facebook and Instagram weren't something that existed as they do now, so I couldn't just chat with my old friends. Then this one day, and I remember this vividly, my dad and I were at a shopper's and I needed to find something, but I didn't know where it was. So I asked my dad and normally he'd know the answer or find out, but this time it was different. He said, I don't know. How about you go ask someone who works here? As stupidly simple as that suggestion was, it opened up a whole new world to me. Maybe it was something that would have happened eventually, but this is when it happened for me. From then on, no matter if I was surrounded by strangers, I had the permission to talk to anyone around me. So I took that permission and I ran with it. Over the following years, I built the confidence and charisma. I learned to love talking to people and learning about what they knew and eventually debating opinions from both sides of the argument. I became more outgoing and cared less about what anyone thought of me. And I did what I wanted to do. I had a loud voice and attitude that I can thank my mom for. I would use that every moment I could and still do, if you hadn't noticed. Near the end of high school, I needed to decide what I wanted to do with my life. I chose filmmaking because it was an amazingly sneaky way of being able to learn so much and do every job by proxy. I smell cigarette smoke. How do I smell cigarette smoke when I'm in the forest? The wind's blowing this way, that means. So there I was at the start of my career, and here I am now, at the age of 25. And I feel like my goals are less around pure filmmaking now and closer to storyteller and problem solver, but I digress. After 10 years of working on my filmmaking skills and having run a video production company for the last few years and generating some amazing work, I'm employed full-time as a digital content specialist and visual storyteller. I literally look forward to my biking commute into work every day and engaging with my coworkers. The, the structure that the work provides is the most important thing to me. It provides me stability so that I can do what I want to do on the side without having to worry about being paid for it. Yet, I'm still yearning for more. I'm happy, but in order for me to thrive, I need to be creating my own passion projects on the side. Projects with heart and soul. This is where I can get back to those five factors that are preventing me from moving forward. Back to number one. I've always struggled to find a community of like-minded people, and it's actually a lack of peer pressure that harms me the most. When beginning Fanshawe College in 2012, my primary goal was to meet like-minded individuals that were interested in starting a business together. This was not the place for that. Seemingly everyone was into partying it up. And so I learned how to have fun and I became one with the herd of students and I rarely saw people working on developing their business skills. Now that I think of it, it's probably because I was in the wrong program. During this time, I started diving into photography. 
College was the time that I really figured out visual composition and the technical details of videography and photography. Over the last seven years, I haven't found many places that are the place for what I was looking for. Networking events and business hubs, especially in London, Canada, didn't really seem to offer a way of moving creatives forward, and they focused more on other types of businesses. I quickly realized that if I wanted to start a business and do what I loved, I'd have to do it on my own. Which brings me to factor two. <laughs> Hi. We had a nature photographer over there. That's pretty cool. Extroversion can actually be a curse. When you get your energy from being around people, it's dangerous when you spend most of your time alone without anyone around. Although my dad and I created a business together where I would head most of the projects and he would assist with planning, script writing, and back-end administration, it was still a very solitary experience. While pursuing leads and attempting to pump out videos, I was very aware that I would love to be working with a team, even a few like-minded individuals. Occasionally, it did turn into a team atmosphere when I hired contractors, and it was fun. But most of the time, it was just me, myself, and I sitting around and waiting for leads. And if you know anything about business, sitting around waiting for leads is a huge mistake because leads don't just come waltzing into your business without a strategy or hard work. But because of the lack of teammates, I really didn't have the urge to hustle and do what it was going to take to make this business succeed. That's where extroversion is a curse. When you thrive by bouncing ideas off of other people. When I am on my own, I just turn into an uninspired mess of non-productivity. It's a fact that I haven't been able to overcome just yet. Number three, I'm very curious. Curiosity is great to have. It makes everyday life interesting and eventful, but it's also something that we as humans tend to lose as we age, at least, some of us. I haven't lost any of the childlike curiosity. Where this comes to bite me is that I'm unfocused with my interests. I'm interested about everything. As anyone who knows me well will tell you, one day I'm interested in one thing, and just an hour later, I'm interested in something else. Just like I said earlier, this is why I got into filmmaking in the first place. To do a bit of everything. At first glance, it seems like a good thing, and it is, until you need to stay interested in a subject matter long enough to see a project through from beginning to end. This rarely happens for me, and it's why I'm so very inconsistent with the output of my content. For being a forest, there's still a lot of noise around. Number four, perfectionism. Perfectionism used to be a problem for me until I learned about and fell in love with the idea of the 80-20 rule. Just being aware of it made finishing projects that much more achievable for me. It doesn't mean that I'll never put in the extra effort, but it does mean that I'm aware of how much time and effort I'm putting into each and every project, and which ones I choose to tackle. Along the same lines, the concept of good enough is an important one to learn, and I think I learned it. I think Casey Neistat has this down to a science because he conveys his messages in ways that are just good enough and he's able to pump out content left, right, and center that is of pretty good quality and conveys his message really, really effectively. It does everything he wants it to do. Finally, faltering motivation. I'm immediately going to out motivation as a stupidly ridiculous emotional feeling to rely on. Bernie Burns at Rooster Teeth puts it best. I heard this and I was like, oh my goodness, this is everything I wanted it to be. I don't believe in motivation. I don't believe that motivation actually exists, and I don't think it's something that you can cultivate. Motivation is just an emotional component of inspiration. Fickle. And if you cultivate discipline, forcing yourself to do something even if you don't want to, that's how you get things done over a long period of time. And it's so much more reliable than the emotional component of motivation. So you might say that I've had faltering motivation. But everyone has that. The best way to solve this is to stop relying on motivation itself to get things done. I, and everyone watching this right now, needs to realize that the most important factor to fix in the creative struggle is discipline. Developing discipline should be your top priority. Out of everything in this video, I'd say that developing discipline will be my top priority going forward. I know that focusing on discipline is going to be worth it because I already know that when I sit down at my desk consciously and work towards a goal, I have forward progress. I make forward progress, just like this video. Although I'm not sitting at my desk. Now, if you're still with me, I'd like to tell you why the most important factor is number five on the list. How I see it is if I work backwards from factor number five, 
towards number one, each step will come my way easier as I master it. For example, if I master discipline, then everything else will follow. And if I don't let perfection get in the way, staying focused will be easier. And once I'm focused, I'll be able to overcome not talking to people because by then I'll have produced content, which in turn will allow me to finally find a group of like-minded individuals who will also be creating because right now I'm not creating. And that's why I don't have a group of creators around me because they're busy out creating while I'm sitting here doing the opposite. It's kind of like the chicken or the egg situation. <sighs> All right, well, this is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you like where I'm going with this, I'd appreciate if you would hit the like button. And if you wanna see my journey going forward, I've asked this in the past and it's, it's kind of interesting to see the development. I've made videos for the last 10 years. So you can follow these videos and follow my journey by subscribing. But I'm just hoping that if you have any questions that you'll leave them in the comments because I like to talk to people as we just discussed in the whole video. And I think having that community, it, it can be on YouTube as well. It can be anywhere. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in another video. Bye for now.